There are over 30 prophecies in the Word of God, over 300 prophecies, I, I should say, in the Bible about the Lord Jesus Christ in His first coming. Over 300 prophecies. I want you to look at, 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 at eight of them and think, think about it just for a minute with me. The book of Micah, chapter number 5, verse number 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me he that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth shall be from old, from everlasting. Now notice, it's very, this, this is the passage, by the way, that in Matthew chapter number 2, when Jesus is born and, and, and the wise men come, and they want to know where is he, he is born king of the Jews, this is the passage that's used to say he's born in Bethlehem. Now, let me ask you a question. What's the likelihood that any person selected at, at random the world over would be born in Bethlehem? What's the possibility of that? Well, how would you arrive at that? Well, the average population of Bethlehem, according to the almanacs, from the time, of, from the time that Micah wrote Micah 5 until today, the average population of Bethlehem from the time of that time to, to the present is about 10,000 people. So you'd take 10,000, you divide it by the population of the, of, the, well, of the world during that period of time, which is about 2 billion, and you'd wind up with, with a number that would be something in the, in the range of 1 in 100,000 people. Now, that's the, you, you statistically, you'd come up with that. So the probability that somebody would be born in Bethlehem between the time of Micah and the time of today, is about statistically one in a hundred thousand people. I just want to put, I just want you to look at some of these prophecies and let's talk about them statistically for a moment. Zechariah chapter number nine, verse number nine. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, having salvation, lowly, riding upon an ass, upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now, of all the people, the Lord Jesus Christ here is presenting himself as king by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. So let's just focus on that one thing. Of all the people from the time Zechariah wrote that till, till now, what's the probability of somebody presenting themselves to Jerusalem as their king by riding on a donkey. Now, I asked that question one time to a guy, and he says, well, that's like one in a million. <laughs> I mean, think about that. What's the probability? I'm, I'm going to be real conservative. And let's just say one in a hundred. Let's don't get too wild here. Now, I know that's not really realistic. It's got to be a lot more than that, but let's just leave it at one in a hundred. If you come over to chapter 11, verse number 12, And I said unto them, If they think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed my price, 30 pieces of silver. Now of all the people who ever lived, how many have been betrayed or sold out for exactly 30 pieces of silver? Now you know what that is. That's Judas betraying Christ for 30 pieces of silver. You say, one in a million. Well, okay. Let's just say one in a thousand. Let's don't do a million. Let's don't put that many zeros up there. One in a thousand. Is that okay? Is that conservative enough? We're not going to try to push this way out and be... We're going to be real conservative. What's the chance between the time Zachariah wrote that and today, somebody... How many people do you think have been betrayed for 30, exactly 30 pieces of silver? Well, let's say one in a thousand. Next verse. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it into the potter, a goodly piece that I was prized out of them. And I took thirty pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Now, notice the specific things that are going to be taken up now. The amount of the transaction is thirty pieces of silver. The location that it takes place is in the, the temple in the house of the Lord. And who winds up with the money 
The potter does. Now, if you know the book of Matthew and the book of Acts, you know that's exactly what Judas did after he betrayed Christ. So of all the people that have ever lived, from the time Zechariah wrote that to, till, till now, how many of them do you think have been betrayed for 30 pieces of silver that was taken back and refused and thrown back into the temple and that wound up in the potter's hands? How many people? Well, maybe we ought to go back up to the first one and say maybe one in a hundred thousand on that one because that one's a little more specific. Okay? I hope we're being conservative enough for you. Come with me, if you will, over to chapter 13 of Zechariah. One shall say unto him, that is, uh, what are the wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Now, how many people who've ever lived from the time of Zechariah till now, do you think, have been wounded in their hands in the house of their friends? I mean, how many do you want to say? Could we say one in a thousand? Would that be concern? I mean, you probably don't know any, but you don't know, you know, the two billion people that have lived in the last 2,000 years. So let's say one in a thousand, just for the sake of it. That's a real conservative estimate. Very generous. We're not trying to skew the thing. Okay, let's try another one. Let's go back to Isaiah 53. I'm just taking eight prophecies. There are 300 in the Bible, just like this, that the New Testament say are fulfilled not randomly, but fulfilled in the person of one person. Not that, see, I'm just talking to you about what's the chance of one person doing that, and another guy doing that, and another guy doing that, and another guy doing that. The New Testament says one person did all of these. Now, you know what you got to do then? you got to add a whole bunch more zeros up here. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to take it this way. Isaiah 53, verse number 7. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers was dumb, so opened he not his mouth. How many men do you know? It, 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 from, from the time Isaiah wrote to now, who when they were tried, and Jesus was tried six times, three times by, the, by Israel, three times by Rome. All six of them were bogus, illegal, wrong. How many people do you know who've been tried, when they're tried six times, and who are innocent, and who know the people trying them know they're innocent? Pilate said, I find no fault with this man. How many people do you know that when they go to be tried, Knowing they're innocent, make no defense. You never even heard anybody like that, did you? Except in that verse. So how many people do you know that do that? Well, let's just say in all the last 2,000 years, one in a thousand. Now, I, that's being real generous, but we want to be generous here. Look down at verse number 9. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Now, how many people do you know who died among the wicked, thief on both sides, but were buried with the rich? How many people do you think, and all of, and since Isaiah wrote that till now, made their grave, died with the, with the wicked, but made their grave with the rich? I'm going to say one and a thousand again. And again, we're being very conservative. Come with me to Psalm chapter 22. One more I want to give you. One more. Psalm 22. And this is a real interesting one to me. Psalm 22, the whole chapter is dictated in the first person. But when you come down to verse number six, 16, he says, For dogs have compassed me, about, compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Now, the writer is David, and he's dictating it in the first person. The interesting thing about it is that crucifixion, piercing the hands and the feet, was not invented, never shows up in history, until 90 B.C. 
when the Persians are the first people to crucify someone, the Romans took it and then spread it all over the world. That's a real prophecy. So how many people do you know throughout church history who have been crucified? Well, let's just say one in 10,000 because it's not a real popular kind of method of execution. Now, let's talk about this just a minute. Here are the probabilities that one person for each one of these, not compounded one guy doing one particular guy doing all, just the probability that one of these prophecies could have been fulfilled. There are eight different ones. The way you determine what the compound probability is, compound analysis, is you multiply them all together. In other words, when, when you, when you, you, in order to get the the uh, uh, composite analysis, you're going to multiply. If we've got a room of 100 people, 50 are men, 50 are women, what's the chance of picking one person at random and it being a man? One in two. If you've got 50, a, a group of, of 100 people, 50 of them are left-handed, 50 of them are right-handed, what's the possibility of picking one person at random and it being right-handed? One in two, 50-50. But what's the probability of picking one person, uh, picking a man who is left-handed? Well, that's not one and two. That's one and four. You multiply them together, and you get one and four, 25 percent. That's how you get compound analysis. So when you add all this up, what you get is 10 to, to the 28th power. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28 zeros after a 10, 10 to the 28th power. That's the probability that that could happen. Now that's with 8. If you had 16 instead of 8, that turns in to 10... to the 45th power. If you, took, if you had 48 of them, it turns into 10 to the 157th power. Now what's interesting about these numbers is this. According to the, the textbooks on statistical probability, I'll read you a quote. In the field of physics, there is the frequent confrontation of extremely rare occurrences. That's what that is. It is commonly assumed that any probability smaller than 10 to the 50th power is a manifest absurdity. Thus it is defined as such. In other words, to fulfill, to, to, to subscribe and ascribe the fulfillment of these messianic prophecies in the person of Jesus Christ to accidental occurrences according to the mathematical statistical science of, of probability is an absurdity. It's scientifically absurd not to believe the Bible. Now, to illustrate how big a number this is, if you count all of the atoms in the universe all of the atoms in the universe are said to be 10 to the 137th power, according to the textbooks. There are 300 of these, but just 48 of them is 10 to the 157th power. Do you understand why John chapter 21 says that if all the books were ever written that would contain what Jesus did, the whole world couldn't hold them? The probability that Jesus is God, who the Bible said that the Bible's right and Jesus is who he said he is, is a, is a probability that is so big all the atoms in the universe can't hold it. Sixty-six books written by 40 authors over a period of 2,000 years that have one message. The Bible is manifestly demonstrated to be a book of supernatural origin written by extraterrestrial wisdom that lives outside of our time and space continuum. We're going to study more about that next week. And it is an absolutely scientific absurdity for you not to believe it and fulfill prophecy declares it so. Jesus said, I did it that way. 
so that when you see it, you'd believe me. And that believing you'd have life, because that's what I came to give you, is life forevermore. When the Bible says that Christ died for your sins, you can trust it because it proves itself to be true on every hand, and it'll prove itself to be true for you. When the Bible says you can trust the Lord Jesus Christ and He'll forgive you all your sins, you can believe it. You can receive His life as a present possession because it's true. Till we meet again the same time next week, Maranatha.